The 6.5 is on the road and we are live here at HPE Discover 2025 in Las Vegas. Daniel, it's been a great show so far and we're pretty much talking about AI, networking and hybrid cloud. Yeah, it's been a really powerful moment for HP, and I think that's really what they were hoping for. You know, they came out with these kind of big three priorities. Of course, right. networking kicked it off. We saw hybrid cloud getting some more focus, and AI. And, and, and the interesting thing about the AI part is like, AI, yes, has its own segments, yeah. but I keep saying AI was really deeply inundated in every part of the story. It was part of the hybrid cloud story, story it was part of the right. networking story. Um, but I think they had a big moment, and of course, deepening the partnership with NVIDIA, that's really important right now, Pat. But mission accomplished. Exactly. And I think it's an appropriate time to use that uh, particular phrase. Yeah, it is, and one of the things that I'm really happy with in the industry conversation is we finally got around to talking about the importance of networking related to AI. You and I were talking about this on the pod before. It's like, Absolutely. well, wait a second. Scale up network, front end, back end network is all very important to modernize. And of course, on the edge. And I can't imagine a better guy to talk about this than Phil at HPE. Phil, great to see you. Yeah, Aruba Phil. Yes, Aruba, Aruba Phil. Phil. <laughs> I, I heard that was how you were set up in the one of the earlier segments. Uh, I was actually christened Aruba Phil. <laughs> That's good. How's that working out for you? <laughs> it's good. And, and his, you know, he runs Iron Man. So he's telling us no, about I know. that. So when he runs, it says on his back, Aruba Phil. That's Correct. Good. You know? But right. hopefully people are reading it on the back and, you know, not the other way around. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know about you, Pat, but I'm always one of those people that's like, if I could even finish one, it no, doesn't exactly. matter what place you come into. So you heard us sort of set this thing up and, yeah. and networking <clears> is having its day. And, you know, we talk a lot about the fact that like, yes, compute sort of is the, everyone wants to talk about compute. But, in the end, the limitations of AI, so many of them sit on the network, and of yeah. course, the other part of it is power. Yeah. We can talk more about power, we'll talk about that with other people. But yeah. With you, of course, AI is the force. What does that mean, though, for the HPE Aruba networking business? Okay, yeah, so when we think about AI, we think about it as a coin, so two sides to the coin. One is AI for networking, and then the other one is networking for AI. Uh, networking for AI is all about the kind of base infrastructure an enterprise would need to kind of roll out in order to deploy an AI service. And when we, sp when we speak to our customers about their AI deployments, they're all really paranoid about the data and where the data is going to go. Because obviously be. they're pushing proprietary data into these models, right? And what they don't want is, you know, that gets out on the internet or whatever it might be. So, so we're seeing lots of customers upgrade the network to more kind of new technologies just to make sure that they're kind of reducing the threat of any kind of security risk or whatever. So, so I think networking for AI translates into a big kind of investment upgrade opportunity for the end-to-end -end network. And then on the other side, we have AI for networking, which is all about the platform. That's right. So we have a platform called Aruba Central, which is part of HPE GreenLake. And what that allows customers to do is to be able to provision and manage their network. And we've been embedding many, many AI capabilities and features uh, into that platform. And that's moving at a rapid rate of knots. I mean, the platform's actually 12 years old, We've done a major redesign over the last couple of years. And actually, we did some kind of counting before we came into this session. Right. In the last 12 months, we've made a 1,000 changes to the platform and added 250 new features. Yeah. And most of them are in the AI space. Yeah, and I'm glad the conversation has also uh, moved from the core switch uh, to the edge and yeah. campus, where there's going to be a tremendous amount of action going on, particularly because this is where a lot of the data is, is being created. Right. And if you even follow history, history says ultimately where the data is created, the most optimal place to do the computing is on the edge yeah. as well. And you know, we talked to the, the, your, the, the sister division, the compute division about, yeah. about this uh, before, but listen, I know you love all of your children equally at HPE Aruba, but can you talk to me about what is the biggest news that you brought out? I mean, you got first billing, right? Yeah, yeah, Antonio yeah. Antonio came out and he said, here's our priorities. Yeah. And number one is 
networking. Yeah, 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 yeah. What did you announce here? Yeah, so, so what we talked about, we have um, a range of different products. Um, so, you know, Wi-Fi, campus switching, SD-WAN, data center products, private 5G. Um, but they're all kind of um, linked under the Aruba Central platform. And what we were speaking about uh, in terms of our announcements was uh, the addition of some agentic AI capabilities into Aruba Central. So we've kind of announced something called the AI Mesh, yes. where we're kind of bringing together all of these agentic AI sub-agents and making it easier for customers to kind of break into their bring it break into that and use that technology and, and maybe just to try and bring that to life a little bit more about what the platform's actually doing for customers we've pre-configured some features that we think would be useful to any customer right and one example is something called the automated power savings feature so what the platform will do is if you've got an office building and let's say you've got 200 access points in the office building yeah and it senses that i don't know three o'clock on a friday only 10 are being used through till nine o'clock on Monday morning, well, the platform will come back and make a recommendation and say, actually, you know what? These other 190 access points, why don't you put them into a deep sleep mode right. to save yourself kind of time, money, uh, energy consumption, etc." So there's kind of like pre-packaged type features. And then kind of what we've morphed into now is more agentic AI, where what the network, well, what the platform's doing is it's trying to spot problems on the network understand what the problem relates to, and make a fix. Yeah. And that really helps ne network customers and network technicians, because it's kind of bringing almost an extra team into managing the network, right? And I think that's where the future of this lies. And I think it's that's going to be a bit of a journey, right? So the way that we've kind of designed it within the platform is the platform will make a recommendation to the customer and say, hey, yeah. you know, we think you should make this change to the network do you want to do it? And the customer will, most customers in the early phases want to say, well, I want to push a button to authorize that. Yeah, kind of a human in the loop. Correct. But over time, you know, customers will say, you know what, I trust the platform. So sure. actually, don't ask me, yeah. just make the change. So that's where this is all heading. And yeah, one of the bigger discussions uh, about automation uh, like this with AI has, has been around skills, right? On one yeah. hand, you have very Correct. capable and competent networking people yeah. who've been doing this for some have been doing this for 20 years. They're flipping uh, buttons uh, up and down. What does it mean uh, in terms of uh, skill sets? Yeah. Or uh, what is this, you know, does it give superpowers to the network admins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, within the Arib Central platform, what we built is some natural, lang natural language capabilities. So kind of what we find is, you know, network technicians are in pretty high demand. And, you know, when organizations lose them because they move to a competitor or they retire, you know, there's a bit of a panic really in terms of who's going to backfill. Quite often they'll go to kind of earlier career hires and try and pull them into the network team. Right. And if you've got this kind of natural language search capabilities in the platform, it makes it way easier for them to kind of get up to speed with what's going on in the network and help fix it. So, yeah, I think AI is really going to help kind of freeing up time for network admins, but also making it easier for kind of earlier career network admins to go in and manage networks for customers. It's kind of interesting though, because it almost feels like these two things are sort of forces that are a bit opposed. Part of me, when I listen to the story about Agentic and you talk about these, these um, yeah, yeah, network yeah. engineers never sleep, they don't need to eat, yeah, they yeah, will yeah. just manage networks all night and day long. <laughs> yeah. and you're going, huh, that seems like that, that particular technology is going to do a lot of what entry <clears throat> levels do. On the other hand, in some ways, Phil, this kind of promise of autonomy, autonomous or autonomy or, or, you know, there's RPA, there's been IPA, there's now, there's been AI, there's been machine learning, there's been, it's, it's like trend, trend, trend. What's different in your mind about this sort of era of agentic and what you're yeah. seeing this in terms of its capabilities? Have we really reached that inflection? The intelligence is there and we're going to get what I think has been kind of promised for a while. Yeah, I think that's right. Look, I, I think there's a couple of points I would make. One is it is very real. It's here and now and customers are using it, right? So it's no longer a, a kind of an idea on a whiteboard, right? It's, it's yeah. there and it's being used. And then to your earlier point about these kind of opposing forces, um, if you go and speak to most network engineers, the um, the level of security threats that they're facing 
is increasing exponentially. Yeah. And actually, they just can't cope with that. So anything right. you can do to free up time over here to help them protect against the security threats, that's a huge win for organizations. Yeah, what, what I've heard on the compute side, networking side, data side, is, is something that I can get around. I mean, I, I run a small company, a, a yeah. few of them, but to be able to put people on revenue generating projects, right? Uh, typically, when you go to IT, you have this great idea. It's like, hey, 90% of my time, I'm spending keeping the lights on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if that could go to 50%, the other, 50, the other 40% could be used to actually work on maybe building new branches, yeah. having some amazing new retail experiences out there, or a fan experience if you're uh, in some sort of a, uh, a stadium. And I don't know if this is just maybe wishful thinking or something like that, but it, it seems to be um, one of those possibilities that this technology can bring. You, you're 100% right. And actually, one of the use cases we talked to um, some customers about yesterday was we said, let's say you have a meeting room Right, and, uh, and and there's all sorts of different kind of protocols, kind of whizzing around networks. Right, one of the protocols is a roaming protocol called 802.111R. Right, I pretend like I know what that is. Uh, yeah, and I was the same, by the way. But the, the net of it is, right, Apple do a great job in terms of supporting that protocol. Some of the other handset manufacturers don't. Right, so let's say in the morning in a particular conference room, you had a lot of Apple phone users. They'd be sitting there thinking, wow, Wi-Fi's great. In the afternoon, if you had a very low percentage of Apple users but people were using other brands, they'd be sitting there thinking, there's something wrong with the Wi-Fi, right? right it's right. actually not the Wi-Fi. It's the fact that their handset doesn't do a great job of supporting this protocol. Now, the platform can work that out and say, actually, you know what, I've kind of worked this, I've seen this problem before, and what I need to do is, is if I just switch that routing protocol off for the afternoon, Right. The experience for all of those non-Apple <laughs> handset users immediately will be fine. And then when they all leave, you can just go back to the normal way of operation, right? So just, you know, this ability to be able to see what's going on in the network, identify the problem, put in the fix, yes. and then potentially reverse back the fix, you know, that's where this is all going. If, cool. if you really look at kind of how it all evolves, as we've seen with each of the industrial revolutions, the productivity volume is is substantially larger. So, you know, we've heard something like 20 trillion plus added to the, the global economy. Yeah. Um, so those people that were doing the more mundane roles yeah. will move up and then what's now considered a more sophisticated role becomes those mundane roles. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. kind of been how we've up leveled over time. It's just not obvious. Like, you know, I'm I'm somewhere in the between the, the, the doomsayer guy that's like, there's no job for any of us. Analysts <laughs> are going away tomorrow. And then yeah. the other side of me is looking at, we're going to see so much productivity gain, I but it's it. just happened so fast. Yeah. Like in the past, we've had a little bit more time with these transformations where we start to see what's going to come during the mobile era or the internet era. And by the way, those felt fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we just, we, way, we've been through quicker. it, but, but this is way quicker. Now you alluded to something about security. Yeah. I think you've mentioned it a few times. Um, it's such a big piece of the story. It's, it's secular as the uh, AI boom goes, I think security goes with it. And over time, a lot of companies have sort of looked at security like insurance. Like what's the least we can invest yeah. to stay secure? In the AI era, I think it's gloves are off. Like companies have to get in front of this. They have to go bigger. In your mind, you know, the security first approach, how big of an opportunity is it? And talk a little bit about how HP's thinking about it. Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, you know, one of our kind of um, phrases is security first uh, AI powered networking. So that's what we're uh, all about. And there's been a big change in the way organizations have gone about security. Um, so historically, you would kind of build a moat and try and keep everyone out, right? Uh, and now what you're seeing is this move towards zero trust uh, security solutions, yeah. right? And this links to a convergence of security and networking coming together, right? So they're almost kind of becoming uh, the same product. And the, and the way I think about it is, you know, HP's got 57,000 people working here. And, the, you know, where it's part of our core business, the HP employees, but we have lots of partners involved in what we do, right? And those partners need access to our systems, you know, in order to collaborate effectively with HPE. And I think lots of companies are like that as well, by the way, aren't they? So, you know, the great thing about zero trust networking is you're able to allocate specific permissions to individual users or devices 
based on where you want them to go across your network. So, you know, what we're doing is we're building more and more security as part of the network, and that basically adds extra protection, but also gives you permission to be able to kind of give some partners access to systems, employees to different systems, whatever it might be. It gives yeah. you a more comprehensive security approach. Makes sense. Well, Phil, I want to thank you so much for spending a little time with us. It's been great to, to see your portfolio yeah. get so much attention here. I know, like I said in the <laughs> beginning, you and I have been big fans of kind of this network wave. Yeah. And, and while, you know, GPUs may be the story of the last year, or LLMs, yeah. the future is going to be how, how we move the data right. and how we power all these data centers. So you've got a big job in front of you. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's keep in touch. I look forward to chatting again next year at HP Discover or sometime in between. Yeah, that's great. Thanks very much. Thank it's you, great to, Great to see you, bud. Thanks. And thank you so much for being part of this 6.5 on the road live at HPE Discover 2025. Subscribe, be part of the 6.5 community. Check out all of the coverage that we did here at this event. More coming soon, stick with us.